Hello everyone, welcome back to KXA and Live. We're back today with our space based segment with our reporter Eric Henriksen. Eric, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing fantastic. We're gonna talk about a little space. There's a lot of space news this week, but we're gonna so kind much of space. hyper focus on one thing. There was a <laughs> comet that flew over, but we already talked about that a little bit. There was a, I don't know if you saw SpaceX caught a rocket. Yeah. That had like a robot arm. We're not going to talk about that either. We're talking about something else. <laughs> and we also saw the Northern Lights in Texas, too. I didn't get to see them. I went, I went outside hoping, but I'm in the kind of, not in the city, but like on the edge of the city. And I was looking like, maybe I can see it. Nothing, sadly. One day. One day <laughs> I'll see them. Well, we have some exciting news from our UT Austin campus. What can you tell us about their um, next project? So they are involved with the Europa Clipper mission. So Europa Clipper launched yesterday around noonish. Uh, out of Florida. And Europa Clipper is our big next big mission in space. We're going to visit an alien world. It's the largest spacecraft we have ever deployed to another planet. Uh, there it is. There's the launch yesterday. Pretty cool. It's aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Falcon 9, yeah. <laughs> a really, really big rocket there. It launched up, carried Europa Clipper. It's going to be sailing. I'm going to say sailing, but it is using rockets. It's going to be heading towards Jupiter and the planet or in, the, in its moon, Europa over the next few years. It's a really, really cool mission. It's our first real up-close look at Europa. And aboard is a piece of technology called Reason. It's a radar system that will be used to analyze the uh, what's beneath the ice on Europa. So Europa has this icy shell that surrounds it, a really cold, really thick icy shell. But beneath that icy shell is an ocean. And this radar system, Reason, will be scanning that ocean to give us new data on what's underneath there. And the hope is maybe, 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 maybe this is where those that bottom, that uh, CG at the bottom of your screen says <laughs> search for alien life. This is the search part. We're hoping that there might actually be life forms beneath that ocean. And so this Europa Clipper, which will get to Jupiter in late spring, early summer 2030, is going to give us that information and let us know, hey, maybe there is life underneath these oceans, life in our solar system. Pretty cool. And Reason was developed at the University of Texas in Austin. Uh, I've met some of the team members involved with it. It was using technology they originally developed to study Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And NASA came to them in the late 80s and said, hey, we'd like some of you to be involved. Don Blankenship is the research scientist heading up that charge out of UT, part of this mission. Uh, they had a watch party yesterday. They messaged me and said there was a watch party happening where they finally got to see all their work head off to Jupiter. And yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Really, really cool mission. That's interesting. So they are not finding actual little green aliens. Me? Do you think they will? Probably not. <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be like uh, bacteria or like little biological organisms, something small. Detecting what it is is going to be challenging. Uh, the ice is very, very, very thick on Europa. So it's not like we're going to drill. But what we'll get is like energy. They're going to look for energy. They're looking for ocean currents movement that kind of thing and so well they have nine instruments on board europa clipper and they're all doing various things measuring the atmosphere measuring uh water vapor plumes that are coming out of the ice things like that and now all those are very important because it's the signs of nu nutrients mixing within that ocean and as nutrients mix in that ocean it allows for life to form that's kind of how life formed on us on our planet millions of years ago uh, billions of years ago and Hopefully, the same thing's happening on Europa. And if it does, that's really, really cool. Europa's in a unique situation because Jupiter is right there, and Jupiter has a radiation field, a magnetic, magnetic sphere, 20,000 times more powerful than Earth's. And so it's highly radioactive. And so one of the things about Europa Clipper is it's going to do these flybys of Europa. But to do that, it, it can't stick around. It kind of has to like arc out and then back. To, so that it doesn't get exposed too much to your, uh, Jupiter's radiation field. So it has these quick little flybys that it's going to be doing over several years to, to get all this information about that moon. So this highly radioactive, and which also means the ice shell helps protect, theoretically, protect any life forms beneath that ice shell from that radiation, uh, which is pretty, just pretty cool. These are animations, obviously, because uh, A, we don't have cameras out that far, <laughs> and B, the spacecraft isn't out that far yet. So how did UT get involved with this project? So NASA came to them, came to their team, and was like, hey, we know you're developing stuff to study the ice beneath Antarctica. Well, we have another big icy thing we want to look at uh, called Europa. Can you help us out? And so they were asked in like the late 80s. It was 88. That's what I have written down in, in my notes from an interview I did last year with their team. And now they're still involved, which is pretty, pretty cool. And they're all very excited to see, see this journey to this this mystical moon. We mm -hmm. first started noticing an ocean in there in the 90s in the Galileo mission. 
they were like, I think there is an ocean down there. And so they were like, we really need to get yeah, involved. Yeah. So, I mean, there was some clues before that, but that was when they really had that solid confirmation. Like, I think there's an ocean down there. So it'll be pretty cool. Here's like, look at that, that cut. So as you can see, like ice really deep, water vapor pouring out, nutrients mixing with the stuff on the surface to the subsurface, which allows this kind of churning to occur. So hopefully, maybe, maybe life will form down there. Little green men, I doubt it, but maybe <laughs> some single cell organisms, or who knows, there could be some like larger. Or sea life that yeah, we like, don't even know about. Larger sea life. There's no telling. The possibilities are nearly endless here on what could be down there. Pretty, pretty cool. There's more water on Europa, they expect, than, or they believe, than there is water in all the oceans on the Earth. Wow. So a lot of water there, a lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities. So I know that this is going to take a while to be completed. Right. What do you think is going to happen once it is completed and let's say it's successful? How do you think we'll develop even further? So this, uh, you'll have this mission go on. You'll have multiple flybys that occur. They have a set number of flybys. Do you remember what the numbers? I wrote it down somewhere on our web store here. Uh, but it has several flybys. I believe it's a couple dozen, something like that. I think third paragraph. I can't read it 49 times? 49, yeah, it's yeah. a few dozen. So 49 flybys <laughs> of the planet or of the moon uh, as they go out. The thing is, they kind of set these goals for these, like the number. We're going to do this. But then they always try to push it a little further because they might be able to make the life last a little longer, get another scan. Yeah. So we're aiming for 49. Maybe we'll get 50. Maybe we'll get 51. It's this, they, They'll keep trying for it. What's interesting I found was Jupiter is about 400 million miles from Earth, a little more than that, 400 million miles, right? But the spacecraft has to, has to travel a billion miles, almost, I think it's almost 2 billion. To go around. Just to reach it. Because because oh. everything's spinning, everything's moving apart. So as as orbits are happening, it has to kind of take an arc mm -hmm. to reach there. So it goes basically like double, almost triple the distance, uh, just to reach <laughs> the the moon to get to that flyby sp spot. Which is why part of the reason it takes that so moon. long to reach this area. And it's, it's very very far. Reach there in about twenty thirty, right? Twenty thirty. So it's late spring, early summer. NASA had it as April. I saw some reports as July. So I'm going to say late spring, early summer, just kind of keep, Somewhere in kind of encompass all that, that three month period, four month period there that they anticipate. So they probably have a more precise exact measurement, but I saw multiple measurements for some reason. I think it had probably to do with like when it launched. Mm -hmm. It originally was supposed to, uh, it was supposed to launch this fall, but they got to able, they were able to move it up to Monday, which is pretty cool. Well, this is amazing for UT to even be a part of, and I know that you wrote up this article, this right. awesome article for anyone who wants to go ahead and read more of those minor details, like the 49 um, times around, right. and all that. What's some other stuff that you have in here that we maybe didn't talk about? I think we hit everything. It's a really cool mission. It's a, it's a great start. This is the largest spacecrafts we've ever sent to another planet, which is pretty amazing. Uh, that that link, by the way, it's not like a big bulky spacecraft. It's <laughs> like a pod with solar with uh, solar panels. So the solar panels is what makes it really long. But uh, yeah, it's really, really big. Really, really big. I feel like uh, I was talking to some guy. He told me it's like a football field. A across. football field. I feel like it's about a football field across with the... <laughs> I'll have to double, double check that answer. But look at it on the screen. It's the size of Jupiter. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but it is pretty big. It has these long antennas sticking off of it also, which make it... Really Just large. That wingspan. The big old wingspan right there. It's a really cool mission. Uh, it's to see these decades. So 88, that's like 36 years. 36 years for, for them to get from the initial, hey, we want you to work on this to now. Uh, UT's team should be really proud. It's over the Institute for Geophysics. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they should be UTIG. They should be really, really proud of the work they've done to finally get this thing off the planet and now into space. And it has to zoom all the way out there and... Just think, can you imagine spending 30 years on a single project? I, I get annoyed when I spend like more than a week on a project. Yeah, I would get bored. <laughs> yeah, it just I, the dedication it takes to do something like this is outstanding. And just to, to see it zoom out there and and know that your work can carry on for decades in the future, the study of this, of this moon. It's one of the two big planets we're looking at. The other one, of course, is our trip to Mars, mm -hmm. which I think, if things are still on track, should be the next decade, figure uh, theoretically, the next decade. We got the moon here in a couple of years and then off to Mars. So maybe maybe we'll get to Mars before we get to Europa, or, uh, but I, I doubt it. But <laughs> fingers crossed. Who knows? Uh, I'm highly anticipated for that, too. It's going to be really cool. And hopefully we'll be alive to see all of this happen. In well, hopefully. It's just a couple of years from <laughs> now. Hopefully we'll be alive. That's dark. Usually I'm the one with the dark sense of humor here. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you never know if these missions are going to go all the way through or not. Yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. I, I have a feeling this will be pretty good. They spend so much money, so much time mm -hmm. that you, you hope these things work out well. You know, occasionally they don't. And we saw with Boeing earlier this year that they had their their, their StarCraft that just did not, just had lots of issues and wasn't as successful right off the bat as they hoped. But hopefully this one, I think this one will be pretty good. This yeah. has had a lot of eyes on it for... Ooh, 36 years so we'll see what happens next yeah well it's also awesome to be part of history ut austin is making their footsteps in space just They're like doing it again <laughs> ut austin always, always breaking records becoming part of history what can you do yes well thank you for joining me eric is there anything else you want to touch on before we wrap up that's all there is don't forget there's a comment out in space right now you can get a good look at it uh, we had a lot of photos sent in reported at kxan.com of that comment you can see it in our night sky really cool uh, that's the big one right now, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the big one. You go outside, take a look, see if you can spot that thing. The comment. Yeah. They yeah, only, they only come around awesome once in a pictures. while. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool. All of those on our website if you're interested. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. And that's all we have today on our Space Space segment. Remember, we have more segments coming up through the rest of the day and into the rest of the week. If you want to catch up more from Eric's story, it's on our website, kxan.com. Thanks so much for joining us.